First Timothy chapter one. John was talking there about uh, going to heaven and being there eternally, forever, never going to end. I thought about what Paul told Timothy in Second Timothy chapter one. Or he says, but now is made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death. Amen. I love that. Yeah. And hath brought life and <clears throat> immortality to light through the gospel. It's immortal, Gary. Yeah. We're immortals. Paul Paul wrote about it in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. He said, This mortal must put on immortality. We're going to be immortal one day. Amen. Flow with the eternal life of Jesus Christ. But 1 Timothy chapter 1, we're going to talk about something tonight out of verses 3 and 4, but we're going to read the first four verses. And, and what you have to understand is, is, is Paul's epistles, they, they run, Romans is, is a main doctrinal book, Ephesians is a main doctrinal book, Thessalonians is all about the coming of the Lord, so you have the gospel in Romans, the mystery in Ephesians, the rapture in the book of Thessalonians, and then when you come into the pastoral epistles, it's personal instructions on, on how, how a man of God is to take those doctrines and teach them and how the local congregation is to function under the doctrines of grace in this dispensation. And so the pastoral epistles are very, very important. And Paul writes right here, beginning in verse 1, he says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God our Savior, I believe that man. Yeah. I believe that puts Paul above any other writer and any other author that we might have in our Christian libraries. Yeah. Sure puts him over John R. Rice or Shelton Smith. Ooh. Amen. Amen. Puts him over him, guys. He, he says, by the commandment of God our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope, unto Timothy, my own son in the faith, Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus, when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some, that they teach no other doctrine, neither give heed to fables and endless genealogy. Something you're going to notice that when you read Paul's pastoral epistles, 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, Titus, there are as many negative commandments as there are positive. There's as many, Paul tells, there may even be more. I've never actually counted them. Paul may actually tell Timothy of, about what to stay away from, what to avoid, and what to shun as much as he tells him what to actually do. And right here he's, tell, he's telling them, you charge them people at Ephesus. He said, charge a man that they teach no other doctrine." Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies, watch this, which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith so do. Now folks, it's not a coincidence that at the very beginning of Paul's pastoral epistles begins with a reminder of what the ministry is all about. And it's not, you know, Jack Hiles and them guys, man, they were far from having it understood and figured out. Amen. This one, two, three, repeat after me. We baptized 10,000 last year, but we only got 2,000 in our church. Yeah. We baptized 10,000 last year in the fundamentals. So we baptized 5,000 last week at this conference. Why is America in the darkness it's in if these men are such soldiers of Jesus Christ? Yeah. Yeah. Answer that question for me. Paul, Paul begins by reminding Timothy what the ministry is. He had left Timothy in Ephesus with a specific purpose for a specific purpose. When I believe, when I believe 1 Timothy was written, Paul, I believe Paul was released from the Roman prison for a short time, and he was arrested a second time, and after he's released from prison, he goes into Macedonia and he leaves Timothy at Ephesus and says, Timothy, remember when, when, he, when he goes back to Jerusalem, Gary, he knows that false teachers are going to come into Ephesus after he's gone yeah. and lead the people astray. And so now he tell, he's going into Macedonia. He tells Timothy, he says, you, you stay here at Ephesus and charge them that they teach no other doctrine. Neither give heed to fables or endless. 
Before Paul left this world, there was one thing and one thing only he was worried about, and that was the doctrine and the gospel and the mystery that Jesus Christ had revealed to him. Yeah, amen. That's all he was worried about, Gary. Yes. I'm telling you, man, when he's sitting over there in Philippians, you know, he's talking about how God had called him and gave him this ministry, and he, he talked about how he was in prison for it. He said, nevertheless, I'm not ashamed. He tells Timothy over in 2 Timothy, he said, I know whom I have believed, and it persuaded he's able to keep it. Yeah. Man. You, what do you think he was talking about? His soul? <laughs> no. He was talking about the, he said, I'm bound, but the word of God is not bound. Yeah. And here he is, he's telling Timothy, he said, he said, look, you stay in Ephesus and charge them that they teach no other doctrine. How did it work? Well, Paul writes 2 Timothy, he says, this thou knowest. Timothy, no, Timothy learned this by experience. This thou knowest that all they which be in Asia be turned away from thee. What a thing. That's how it goes 90% of the time. Yep. I mean, I mean, but but here's here here's what Paul's telling him. He tells him three things here. Charge them that they teach no other doctrine. Now, folks, we don't have to guess. By the time you by the time you get the first Timothy, you ought to know what doctrine Paul's talking about. The Bible's plumb full of doctrine. Yeah. Some some that, that you honestly have no business business teaching today. Amen. There are Bible doctrines in that Bible that you have no business teaching today. Amen. But here, if by the time you get to 1 Timothy, it ought to be very clear to you as a Bible reader and a Bible student what doctrine Paul is talking about when he tells Timothy to charge them that they teach no other doctrine. He, he, this was not the first time that Paul did this in 1 Corinthians chapter 4. He tells them, he says, I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons I warn you. Though ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ, you got uh, Amen, folks, you got them today. Uh, yeah. I mean, everybody in the world thinks they're, they're a man sent of God, don't they? Mm. Everybody. They learn one little truth in the Bible and they think, oh, God, God's got great plans for me. I'm going to start a church and save the world, you know. And Paul says, though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. And then what did he tell, what did he tell him next? For this cause have I sent unto you, Timotheus, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways. Which, I, which be in Christ as I teach everywhere and in every church. He sent Timothy back to Corinth and said, you go up there and remind them of my ways which be in Christ as I teach everywhere and in every church. You think Paul had changed his mind by the time he wrote 1 Timothy? When he tells Timothy, you charge them that they teach no other doctrine? Other than what, Paul? What I've preached. Paul pulled no punches when it comes to this stuff. Amen. He tells Timothy, what you've seen and heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who should be able to teach others also. Mm -hmm. Paul said this time and time again. He knew where his doctrine come from. He wasn't on an ego trip, Gary. Yeah. He wasn't a self-conceited, uh, 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 puffed up man. He knew where he had got his doctrine. Amen. He wrote in 1 Timothy chapter 6, he said, what I've been speaking to you are the wholesome words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hmm. He said in 1 Corinthians 14, 37, he said, if any man among you think himself to be spiritual, let him acknowledge that what I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. Paul pulled no punch. He knew where this stuff come from. Yeah. He knew what he had taught. He knew what he had preached and who had gave it to him and, and what his office was. He had just said, I'm an apostle by the commandment of God. God sent me. God gave me the words. And I tell you, Timothy, you charge them in Ephesus that they teach no other doctrine. Mm. Notice what he says next. Neither give heed he to fables. That's storytelling. You know, I've seen that my whole life in churches, man. Just storytelling. You know, I, 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 I've taught the people, well, look at what he says next, and then we'll, we'll look at it. 
Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies which minister what? Questions. Folks, I, I, I deal with people on a daily basis. I deal with people, all I've dealt with people in, in these issues since I was 24, 25 years old. Listen, listen to me. Right division cleared up all my questions, Gary. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. I sat in church from the time I was 11, well, earlier than that, probably 8, 9 years old. I sat in church, I listened, I've sat in free will Baptist churches, I've sat in independent fundamental Baptist churches, I've, I've listened to Sword of the Lord men, I've listened to them all. And, and listen to me, honest to goodness, I've seen people sit in church 30, 40 years, and today they have more questions than they had when they started. What's going on? Paul, Paul said, listen, man. He said, these other doctrines, these fables, and these endless genealogies, all they're going to do is minister questions rather than godly edifying. I've talked to people down their salvation. You know, you know I, I don't know how many times I've heard some person tell me they were down their salvation. I say, why are you doubting? Well, I heard a preacher one time say, and, and, and they go back and uh, what it turns out to be is some preacher stood in the pulpit told a story that was not founded. Listen, we ain't worried about what some preacher said. What does that book say? Uh -huh. Yeah. Amen? Your salvation is founded and rooted and grounded in the promises of God's Word, not some preacher telling a story. You know, you, you take, you, I mean, honest to goodness, that, that, it's a big thing in fundamental Baptist churches to, to say, oh, if it happened on a Sunday, everybody stand up. Well, if you're somebody like me and John, we might not remember the day of the week, huh, John? <laughs> He's still in the three days. And, and honest to goodness, I don't remember what day of the week it was I got saved. I had to work it out in my head even remember what year it was, Bill. <laughs> But I've, I've heard preachers stand in pulpits and say, you know, you know some, somebody say, I, I was young, I know I trusted Christ, but I don't remember when. Some preacher stand up in the pulpit and be like, I don't know how a man can have a head-on collision with the king of kings and not remember it. <laughs> and you know what he just did? Not anything he said is rooted and grounded in Scripture. Yeah. Right. That's a fable. And what he just did was minister questions to half the congregation in the church. Yeah, there you go. Truth of the matter is, that guy probably remembered it more because he laid up drunk for the first 50 years of his life. Who knows? The point I'm making is, is don't worry about those things. What does God's Word say? There you go. Amen. Endless genealogies. I'm not worried about church history. I'm not worried about what Irenaeus was teaching in 300 A.D. or Justin Martyr or Clement of Alexandria or Clement of Rome. People say, well, how come we can't find what you was teaching in church history? Because they were already apostatizing before they chopped Paul's head off. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Church history was written by a bunch of Roman Catholics. I'm not worried about it. Where is this little church going to show up in church history, John? If the Lord tarries 200 years, what are they going to write about Hillview Baptist Church? Right. Nothing. But we were here. Amen. And we were teaching the truth of that book. Yeah. And there's been little pockets of believers like this from the time of the Apostle Paul all the way up till today. And don't worry about it. Just keep standing on the truth. Teach no other doctrine. Don't give heed to fables, endless genealogies, and war and good warfare. Yeah, amen. I love it, man. Paul, Paul said these things minister questions. Let me give you an example. Mark chapter 16. Let me show you a Bible doctrine. This is a Bible doctrine I'm getting ready to show you. Mark chapter 16. Verse 15. He said unto them, Go ye into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. Sounds good so far. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Uh-oh, now we've, jumped, we've done split the body of Christ in five different directions. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Look at what he says next. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Mm -hmm. and, now, and now, you know, one group holds to half the verse, and another group takes another half of the verse, and one group takes half the verse, but says it really didn't mean he that believeth and is baptized is you just started three different churches. 
And look at verse 17. You can't divorce verse 17 from verse 16. See that word and? Yeah. He said, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and these signs shall follow them that believe. You can't divorce the passages. And so you got one group over here thinking the signs are formed, and you got another church over here that thinks the baptism's formed, but not the signs. And the body of Christ is so confused and divided today, they don't know what from down. Yeah. What right. happened? Because they taught other doctrine. Uh -huh. It ministered questions. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you think you think yeah you think you think John R. Rice and Shelton Smith was able to handle those signs and stuff there? No. no. I can tell you. Listen, those those signs that those signs served two purposes in Israel's program. They were a sign of the powers of the world to come. In the body of Christ program, they were for a certain time while the church was in a state of infancy. Yeah. Because now what God had, what Paul, what God was doing in the body of Christ was something not revealed in Scripture. Mm -hmm, right. But because it was a mystery, God gave gifts unto men until that time of perfection come. Paul said, now I see darkly through a glass, but then face to face. You now see face to face with the glory of this mystery. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You don't need this, the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But, but see, you, you, when you when you don't un, when you don't understand doctrine and teach doctrine correctly, it'll minister questions, amen. And, and I've, I've come to find out that most people have more questions than they have answers. Sure, amen. Look there in First Timothy, though. I like what he says. Here's really where I'm going with all this. He says, "Which minister questions rather than godly edifying." Amen. Folks, it's a rare thing to find a little church like this where you can go in and be edified according to the doctrines of godliness. And I, I mean it, man. I mean, I mean, they're, they're rare. I mean, you, you may you may have four or five in this whole state. And you know what's sad about it? You come to realize most people don't really care. Yeah. Most people just want a building to go to. Amen. Just, just another entertainment thing to do on Sunday. It's not about this stuff anyway. But Paul, remember Paul, I, I told you, it's, it's, it's not a coincidence that Paul begins his pastoral epistles with reminding us what the ministry is. And it ain't building a building and it ain't building an organization. And it ain't about, you know, getting a PhD in front of my name and glorifying myself. What the ministry is about is edifying the body of Christ. Godly edification. You see that word edify there? That's a, that's a, that's a word that means to build up a structure. That's what it means. It belongs to a family of words that speak of architecture. Amen. Structures, designs. It also is associated with the word stewardship. Administration, it's closely associated to the word dispensation. And what Paul is talking about here, what Paul is reminding Timothy of, is the current administration of God. I don't care what man is doing. I'm worried about what God is doing today. Yeah, yeah. And what God's current administration is, He is building a church of which He has given us the blueprints and the specifications. He's given us the design of this building. He's given us the doctrines to help Him build this building. And He's made us stewards over this labor. Yeah. And one day, God is going to closely examine what I built. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Paul said, let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. And then he said, but if any man build upon this foundation wood, hay, stubble, gold, silver, precious stones, he said, every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it. 
God is going to judge. He's going to come in and one day, Bill, I'm going to stand before him and he's going to closely examine everything that I built upon the foundation of his son. That includes you people. This is why Paul said, hold fast. He tells the Philippians, hold fast the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run nor run in vain, that I have not labored nor run in vain. He's saying, he's saying, let these doctrines work in you so that when, when you are judged, I can rejoice in that day. And, and so we have to understand that, that when Paul says, let every man take heed how he built it thereupon, that's a big statement. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I mean, I mean I, I'm just, I'm, I'm one of these kind of guys that when I read my Bible and I read a verse that says beware or take heed, it was like that verse I read from uh, Micah last Sunday morning where he, he says, God, God calls me. He says, oh, oh, earth, yeah. perk up. This is basically what he's saying. Oh, earth, perk up. Let all the inhabitants of the earth hear. And then what's he say? For the Lord cometh out of his high place to tread down the high places of the earth. Or something to that effect. God called the whole earth to give ear to that. How many people you think you bump on bump into the street even though that's in a Bible? Hmm. Isn't that something? Sure is. Here's God saying, let every man take heed. How many times do you think they teach that in seminary? This is about the ministry. What Paul's writing about 1 Corinthians chapter 3 is so is about the ministry that God gave him. The dispensation and the administration of the building of the body of Christ. And he says, look, I've laid the foundation another man built it, but let every man take heed. You think they're going to teach that at some Bible school? They're not. And I don't think, listen, I think it's important that we understand, you know, so that we can take heed how we build. And so the first, the first thing is, what is God building today? Look at Matthew chapter 16. And folks, listen, you got to get this stuff, man. I want you, I, I want everyone to, well, I mean, y'all understand quite a bit. But I, listen, I want, I want the people in this community to start understanding that, that, that we've got something real up here on top of this hill. Amen. Yeah. That if they would come here, they wouldn't sit in the church for 30 and 40 years and have more questions than they do anything. But if they come here, they get their questions answered and we can build them up in the doctrines of grace. Right. But look, look at what Paul says there, or, or Jesus Christ, Matthew chapter 16. Who do men say that I am? Some say John the Baptist, some, uh, some Elias, others Jeremiah, one of the prophets. He saith unto them, but whom say ye that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. I believe that. I believe Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, but that ain't enough to save me today. Right. Amen. Sure. The Pope believed that, the Seventh day Advent. Let me tell you something. Yeah. If you believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that's it, and then you think you're going to heaven because you're following the words in red, you're on your way to hell today. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Amen. I'm just point putting it out there, waist high. That's the truth. What's he say now? He's, Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. You know why John wrote his gospel? Do you know why John's gospel was written? People say, Oh, that gospel was written for the body of Christ. No. John says at the end of his gospel, Many other signs did Jesus in the sight of, of men. And he said, and they're not written in this book. But these are written that ye may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Mm -hmm. That's what John's gospel was written for. So that, so that they could believe that he was the Christ, the Son of God. Okay? Yeah. Now, look at, what, look at what he says here. Thou art the, Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build 
my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Now here comes the Pope. You know why the Pope's messed up? He's trying to, he's, he's, he's in the wrong dispensation trying to build something God ain't building today. Yep. The Pope is trying to build a kingdom on this earth and it ain't going to happen because that ain't what God's doing today. Amen. Right. Yep. You don't have power to bind and loose things in heaven and earth, folks. I'm sorry. And when he breathed on them in John 20 and said, Whosoever sins ye remit are remitted, and whosoever you retain, they are retained. You don't have that power either. Right. Man. That was given to the twelve. Why? He had already told them they were going to sit in twelve thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Mm -hmm. He was giving them power. That's not us. That's right. This church that Christ is talking about building here is not the church being built today. This church here is the church is a church of prophecy. You can find it in uh, Psalm 22. I'll write the verses down here. It's quoted in Hebrews 2.12 and it's a quote from Psalm 22 beginning in verse 22 through 28. Go over there and read the psalm and find out what the church is. <laughs> I will praise thee in the midst of the congregation. I will declare thy name in the midst of my brethren. The Lord is king and governor over all the earth. The kingdom is the Lord's. Yeah. He tells you in verse 19, I give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. The church that he's talking about being built there is the kingdom church and it's going to be built upon Jesus Christ, the foundation as the Christ and the Messiah of the nation of Israel. There's nothing there about him dying for their sins, being buried and rose again the third day. Right. Now, you got that. That's the foundation of that church. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. This is the church, this one here, of prophecy. That's the church that got the Great Commission in Matthew 28. Amen. Yeah. To go and teach all nations to observe all things Christ had commanded them. What did he commanded them? About the law. Because in the kingdom, the law is going to go out of Zion. And many nations are going to learn wisdom. Mm -hmm. God's plan for the earth is through this kingdom church here. They're going to go out and take God's law and God's word into all the world. And all the nations are going to learn the righteousness and wisdom of God. Yeah. Paul understood this. Look at Romans 15. We have to understand what's being built today. I mean, honest to goodness, I mean, boss, boss gives you a job, and you, you show up on the wrong job site, start building the wrong house. That's no good, is it? Look at Romans chapter 15, verse 8. This, this is the prophetic program what Paul writes right here. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers, watch this, and that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. Yeah. And then he gives a bunch of quotes. As it is written, for this cause I will confess to thee among the Gentiles and sing unto thy name. That's Psalm 117. Uh, no, uh, I forget what song that is. And again, he saith, Rejoice ye Gentiles with his people. That's the song of Moses, Deuteronomy 32. And again, Praise the Lord, all ye Gentiles, and loud him, all ye people. That's Psalm 117. And again, Isaiah saith, There shall be a root of Jesse, and he that, he that shall rise to reign over the Gentiles, in him shall the Gentiles trust. But what's that all about? It's all about Israel and their kingdom. Israel is going to glorify God for His mercy when Israel is saved. And the nations are going to be blessed and saved through the nation of Israel. That's not what God did today. Right. Right. This has nothing to do, what God is doing today has nothing to do with any of that. You say, what happened? I know what happened. The stone that the builders rejected. 
That foundation of that kingdom church, that foundation stone was rejected by the builders of the nation and of the kingdom. Isn't that what the Bible said? Psalm 118, Jesus Christ quoted it, Peter quoted it. That, bit, that stone that the builders rejected the same as made the head of the corner. Mm -hmm. All right, He's going to become that head cornerstone one day, but the builders of the first century rejected the stone of the kingdom. Yeah. Amen? Amen. What was that son? That he was the Christ, the son of the living God. Mm -hmm. They rejected it, Gary. Yes, yep. sir. Yep. They nailed him to a cross. They asked him, Art thou he? Art thou the Christ? He said, Thou sayest it. And hereafter shall you see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of glory coming with the clouds of, of, of heaven. <laughs> and they jumped up and rent their clothes. You heard it! Blasphemy! Yeah. yeah. Then you know what happened? God, God raised him from the dead after they nailed him to a tree. Gave a bunch of fishermen, gave a bunch of fishermen the Holy Ghost of God, filled them with all knowledge and wisdom and scripture, and here they are standing in Jerusalem preaching the resurrection. Yeah. What happened? They rejected it then too. Yeah. What did Peter say? He said, Let all the house of Israel know that this same Jesus whom ye crucified, God hath raised from the dead, made him both Lord and Christ. Yeah. What happened? They rejected it. They rejected him as Christ before and after the crucifixion. Mm -hmm. Now remember what God's plan was? That through this kingdom and through this church, this kingdom church of the nation of Israel, that all the nations were going to be blessed and all the nations were going to be brought to God through Israel. Mm -hmm. Here they are, Gary, Acts chapter 7, shrouded in blindness and darkness. They rejected the stone of the kingdom. They rejected him. They rejected him as Christ. They rejected him as Messiah. It seemed all hope was lost for mankind, Bill. Yes. Mm -hmm. They look up, Stephen says, I see the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. And they ran at him with their ears stopped. Yeah. I see him. He's standing. <laughs> the world don't know what about hit them that day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen? Yes, sir. He's standing when all hope seemed lost. When, 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 when it seemed that God's promises had failed. That Satan's darkness had so gripped the world that the Gentiles and Israel joined in hands in rebellion and crucified God in flesh. Satan had so blinded men's eyes that when their Creator showed up in flesh and blood, they didn't know Him. The, the Bible said light shined in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not and they nailed Him to a tree. And it seemed like all hope was lost. But then, God began to reveal the mystery. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And I thank God for the mystery. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I thank God the day God showed. I thank God for the day He showed me the difference in the two. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So what is being built today? What is the mystery that all this was put on hold, and God is now reconciling Jew and Gentile in one body by the cross? Ephesians two sixteen. Amen. Amen. God took believing Jews, believing Gentiles, and put them in one body through the cross of Jesus Christ and reconciled them back to Himself. Mm. That's the mystery. Hallelujah. I thank God for the mystery. Yeah. Amen. I thank God for the salvation of grace. Mm. Yes. Amen. That's what happened, folks. They, they, they rejected the stone. And the church that is being built today is a mystery church. It's not a prophecy. And it's found in Ephesians 1.23. It's called the church which is His body, the fullness of Him that filleth all in all. Yeah. That's the church being built today. Amen? Yes, sir. What's the foundation? Look over in 1 Corinthians. Now Christ had already told Peter, Upon this rock I will build my church. He gave Peter, Peter, certain powers and authority. I give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatsoever thou bound on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth. Peter had great authority. We're not downplaying any of Peter's ministry. That's right. It's just as, as authoritative and just as important as this one over here. Yeah. But we have to acknowledge the difference in the two. 
So when Paul said, I have laid the foundation, he can't be talking about the foundation Peter had laid. They both preached Jesus Christ. Peter preached him as, as, the, as the Christ, the Son of the living God, raised from the dead to sit upon the throne of David. Paul preached him as dying for our sins, buried and risen again from the dead, seated at the right hand of God, and made the head over the body, the church, which we are a part of today. Amen. Yeah. And so we're not waiting for Christ's second coming to come and sit upon the throne of David. We're waiting for the rapture of the body of Christ. Yes, sir. Yeah. Amen. We've got a different hope. And when you start understanding this, you'll see it. But look at 1 Corinthians 3.10. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have what? Laid the foundation. Mm. What was the foundation Paul had laid? It was the gospel that he received by revelation of Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's, listen man, you couldn't get in. You couldn't get into this new creature apart from the gospel. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. How did you get in? By the gospel. How did Paul say you got in? Ephesians 1.13 In whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation. Mm -hmm. How did you get in man? You got in through the gospel of your salvation. Well who got that gospel? Paul did. Amen. Yeah. He yeah. received it by revelation of Jesus Christ. Galatians 1.11-12 And it's through hearing and believing that gospel that you get into the body of Christ today. Right. Amen. Amen. That's the foundation. And so the foundation that we are built upon is the foundation of Paul's gospel. And let me let me tell you something. I'll be winding down here in just a second. But if I take if I take kingdom doctrine and build upon Paul's foundation, it fails. Yep. There are two structures. You understand that? The kingdom, the nation of Israel, and the body of Christ, they have two foundations, both are Jesus Christ. That's right. Amen. One is Jesus Christ as the, as the Messiah of Israel. The other one is as the dead, buried, and risen head of the body of Christ. Amen. They're both Jesus Christ. But they're, they're two different foundations, and for these foundations are a whole set of doctrines to be built upon that foundation. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. With Christ as the Messiah of Israel, there's a whole set of doctrine that goes with it. With Him as the head of the body, there's a whole, sort of, a whole bunch of doctrine that goes with it. Now, if I take kingdom doctrine and build upon Paul's foundation, it does not work. Amen. Right, right. Amen? It's not going to work. I mean, you take people today. You, 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 you got uh, what the world has done is they've taken Israel's program, put it over here. We are a spiritual body raised to sit in heavenly places, blessed with all spiritual blessings. But what we've done is we've taken Israel's program and joined it to the body of Christ and made a physical, earthly, religious system out of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. we got to have altars just like Israel. <laughs> Yep. We've got to have holy days just like Israel. We've got to have a Sabbath just like Israel. And, and what, 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 what people have done is they've taken Israel's program and started building it upon this foundation. Yes. You, you, you take people, they go over there and they rob they tongues and healings and signs out of Israel's program and build them upon Paul's foundation. Yeah. You're right, Richard. They, they, they take kingdom prayer. Whatsoever you ask, believe, and ye shall receive. And they build it upon Paul's foundation. Yep. Yep. Paul, Paul, got, Paul, got, Paul asked God three times, Lord, remove the thorn of my flesh. My grace is sufficient. Mm -hmm. yep. What, Paul, you didn't believe? Yep. You realize, Benny, he didn't shut down the bar people understood this stuff. That's right. Yep. But they're taking kingdom doctrine and building upon Paul's foundation, the signs of the times. There's been people setting dates since 1840. And they're going to keep setting dates. There are no signs of the rapture. It's a mystery, folks. You're not living in the times of prophecy. You're living in a, an age that was never prophesied. 
prophesy. Amen. Yeah. And people take the signs of the times and they put them upon Paul's foundation and they've been, they've been taking this and mixing it with this for so long that the body of Christ is so confused they don't know where they're at today and most people have given up. That's mm. good. Yep. They bounce from church to church looking for the truth and not one church has been able to give it to them. Yep. All they've been doing is ministering questions rather than godly edifying, yeah. which is in faith. Amen. Paul said, I've laid the foundation another man buildeth thereupon. Let every man take heed. Mm -hmm. Look there, look in Romans 16. I, I promise, I'm almost done. Three more times. <laughs> we must realize what foundation we're building upon today. Now, I believe he's the Christ, Bill. Yes, there ain't a doubt in my mind he's the Messiah of Israel. There ain't a doubt in my mind that one day the heavens are going to depart like a scroll and he's going to come tearing through the heavens on a right white horse. <laughs> and he's going to march to the eastern gate. His feet are going to stand upon the Mount of Olives. He's going to march to the eastern gate and walk and sit upon the throne of his glory, the throne of his father David. There ain't a doubt in my mind that every bit of that is true. Yeah. yeah. But it's not what I'm looking for. That's right. Amen? Yes, sir. Now there's coming a time when Israel's going to be looking for those things again. Mm -hmm. we, what we're looking for today is the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. He's going to come and call us out of here to meet Him in the clouds. And we're going, we're going to the heavenly places where God has called us. Romans 16, 25. Now to Him that is of power... God's power. Bill, I believe, God, I believe God's word and God's doctrine has the power to establish people. Amen. But you've got to understand how God's power works today. Do I believe God can still heal? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I believe if God wanted to, I could still, if he wanted to, I could walk by and my shadow could raise somebody from the dead. I believe God can still do that. Yeah. That ain't what he's doing. Right. And you ain't big enough to make God do what he's not doing today. Yeah. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to what? My gospel. You see that? Keep reading. And the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began and according to the scriptures of the prophets according, look at what he says, to the commandment of the everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. Now let me ask you something. If a man gets behind a pulpit and he takes a believer in Christ and he takes him to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Hebrews, James, 2 Peter, Revelation, to make him doubt his salvation, that man is disobeying the everlasting commandment the commandment of the everlasting God. Yep. Yep. What God is doing today is establishing us upon the Pauline gospel of grace. What God wants today is for men who have believed to come and to be established upon the grace of God and the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. And when a man runs to doctrines out of these books to unestablish somebody, they're disobeying the commandment of God. Yep. Now that, listen, that's serious business, man. I want no part of it. Amen. No part of it whatsoever. Amen. Paul said God's power to establish us is according to His gospel. What am I to be established on? The foundation that Paul laid. Not just to get a man to believe that Christ died for him and get him saved, but what's he saved to get him established in that gospel. For him to know what the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ did for him. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 3.12. You know? He said, he said, now if any man build upon this foundation, wood, hay, and stuff, by the average preacher thinks that's TV, you know, pornography, and bars. And gold, silver, and precious stones, the average preacher thinks that's church attendance, door knocking, and track passing out. There ain't nothing about your works in the context. 
Read all of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3. See what Paul's talking about. If any man's work shall abide. He said, look here. He said, I've laid the foundation. What is it? It's the gospel that God gave me. He said, now another man's building on it. He said, but let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. What has the context been about? The Corinthians, what were they? They were divided. Why were they divided? Because they were yet carnal. Why were they yet carnal? Following a bunch of carnal wisdom of this world. That's why they were carnal. And Paul reminds them in 1 Corinthians, he said, God laid to nothing the wisdom of this world when he preached the cross to you. God destroyed everything you ever learned, big boy, the moment you heard and believed that gospel. For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them which believe. Paul's reminding the Corinthians, when you were, he said, he said, that gospel message made and destroyed the entire wisdom of this world. And then he comes down into chapter 2 and he said, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom. And I want you to get this and I'm closing. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 7. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. So what's Paul talking about? He's saying, look, he's saying, I've laid the foundation. It was the gospel. This gospel, this foundation I laid destroyed the wisdom of this world. He said, and now God has given us, there's a wisdom He's laid up for us, Bill, before the foundation of the world. God has a wisdom laid up for us that He's kept secret and hid. And He ordained it before the world unto our glory, Gary. Mm -hmm. If I know these things, it is my glory. Not my makeup and my blue jeans. What's my glory is knowing that hidden wisdom of God. Amen. Yeah. And Paul said, but I couldn't speak to you as spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. He said, I couldn't share this great mystery with you. Because you're still a bunch of carnal babes walking around fighting and, and dividing over stupid stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. That's what he told them. What is this hidden wisdom? God has ordained a hidden wisdom for us and it's revealed by His Spirit. What is it? Look at 1 Corinthians 2.12. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God. Why? That we might know the things that are what? Freely given to us of God. God didn't send His Spirit into me be able to keep me tore up the rest of my life. And to put me in a spirit of bondage and fear. Paul said, God has not given us the spirit of bondage again to fear, but the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. Yeah. The spirit, God, listen, how do I know when the spirit of God is leading and guiding me? When I'm getting that hidden wisdom of God, the spirit of God is making me to know and understand everything that God has freely given me in Jesus Christ by grace. That's why when Paul gets to Ephesians and he starts preaching this great mystery, how does he begin? This is what he couldn't share with the Corinthians because they were yet carnal. How does he begin Ephesians? Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ. Yeah. When you get rooted and grounded in the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, you're ready to ascend and seek with Him and sit with Him in heavenly places and begin to seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth at the right hand of God. They're all yours. He that spared not His own Son but delivered Him up for us all, how shall He not also with Him freely give us all things? And this is the gold and silver and precious stones that Paul's talking about. That God would take the riches of His glory and strengthen your inner man. What am I to be doing? I'm to be building the inner man up into Christ in all things. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm closing my Bible. Mm -hmm. Godly edification. How does it work? How do we do it? Well, Paul said all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. 
What does God want us to be? He wants us to be a perfect man. A grown, mature saint in the Word of God. What did He give us? All scriptures given by inspiration of God. And it's profitable for what? Doctrine. Doctrine. Reproof. Correction. Instruction and righteousness. That the man of God may be what? Perfect. Truly furnished and walk good works. Not only does those things perfect me, but it furnishes me, Gary, to perfect those things in other people. It's why Paul told the Romans, he, he, said, he said, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end you may be established. That is, that I might be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. By our mutual faith, we can both be comforted together and established together. Amen. I love it, Bill. Gosh, oh my. Look, I mean, but you, you look at this. Now, look at how God laid out the book for you. What two, what two things did God say He would establish you by? Paul's gospel and the revelation of the mystery. What you, the way God wrote that book, Romans is the doctrine of the gospel. And then you have books of reproof and correction concerning the doctrine contained in the book of Romans. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. What Paul is doing in these books, Corinthians and Galatians, he is reproving and correcting those believers concerning their error in the doctrine of Romans. The Galatians, what are they doing? Seeking perfection by the law. Paul had to go back and correct them concerning their doctrine on the cross. The Corinthians, what are they doing? Living it up in the world, man. What does Paul do? He goes back and corrects them. Then you come to Ephesians. What's that? That's the mystery. That's the book of doctrine concerning the mystery. And Philippians and Colossians are reproof and corrections and instructions concerning those doctrines right there. And if you will read, if this is God's godly edification right here, and if you if you will read Paul's epistles according to that to that process of edification, that you it has to work. It has to. God ordained it. Yeah. That book didn't just happen by chance. And is listen, Israel's programs the same way. And I really am done right here. The New Testament. The New Testament, I said, contains the gospel of the circumcision and the gospel of the uncircumcision. Right? Mm -hmm. How many books are in your New Testament? 27. 27. And so you have, you have, let's just write Paul and Peter up here. Paul and Peter. Now you have, you have 13 books by Paul. Right? Mm -hmm. Nine church epistles and four pastoral epistles. You come over here in the gospel of the, circ the circumcision, you have 13 epistles. You have nine general epistles and four gospels. 13 and 13. One book stands alone. It's the book of Acts that shows you the transition between the two ministries. Mm -hmm. Now, Paul wrote Romans and Ephesians and then Thessalon Thessalonians shows you the coming of the Lord. Paul showed you the whole dispensation. In Romans, he shows you how this dispensation began with the blindness of Israel. In 1 Corinthians, he shows you when it's going to end with the rapture. And then he takes you through this whole building process unto the rapture of the body of Christ in 1 Thessalonians. Yeah. Yeah. So you have Romans is about the cross. Ephesians is about the body of Christ. And Thessalonians is about his coming. In Israel's program, Hebrews is about the cross. It's the Romans of the gospel of the circumcision. Mm -hmm. First John is the Ephesians of Israel's program. Abide in him. Amen. Whosoever is born of God, the faith. it's all about who they are in Christ that they abide in. And then Revelation is like Thessalonians. It takes them to the coming of the Lord, which is the second coming, not the rapture. Mm -hmm. Both programs are contained right there beautifully in our King James Bible. Amen. Amen. But you cannot be built today and edified under right doctrine by mixing this program upon Paul's foundation. 
I've heard so I've had so many people come up to me and say, Preacher, you know, I read Romans and I feel saved. And then I read Hebrews and I don't feel saved. Well, what's that tell you? <laughs> what does that tell you? Yeah. Amen. Man, I feel saved until I read the book of Matthew. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, there you go. They're two different programs. We have to understand what God's building today, the foundation that He's building upon, and the doctrines that He's building with. Both these programs have their own vocabulary, man. Peter, Peter and them speak of a holy nation and a royal priesthood and a kingdom of priests. Paul speaks of a new man and members of the body of Christ. They're completely different. We are a new man, not a holy nation. Yeah. We're not Jew nor Gentile. We're one new creature, members of one body. Paul, but, but, the, but the Jewish program speaks of a holy nation and a kingdom of priests and a priesthood and all these things. Yeah. And so they've got their own vocabulary, their own doctrines and everything. And we have to understand how to build upon, upon the right foundation today. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right, let's pray. Mm -hmm.